So now I'm going to do a clear coat uh, color shift on this pendant. And you can see I've, uh, I've got black and, and white-ish uh, makigami strips. And there's a lot of color variation between the two colors. They're, they're very different colors. So I can make a fairly thick, a fairly thick mixture of, uh, I'm going to make a purple. I'm going to use some red and some blue. And I am mixing this, uh, I'm using even parts of red and blue, and, uh, and then I'm going to use wood glue, one part wood glue, half a part red, half a part blue, one part wood glue, and I would say there's about four parts water in, in there, and I'm going to mix this up. And you can see it's a, it's a fairly thick mixture. I would not use this thick a mixture on something uh, where, where my colors were similar. But because these colors are different enough, uh, this, we should still see the variation even though we have one coat of this, this fairly thick mixture on it. So now I work the paint into the makigami, and I don't want it to pull. Just a little bit. Just like that. And notice I'm going back and cleaning up everywhere where the, it pulls a little bit. And I don't know if you can notice this, but I now have this, this slight color variation. I've got my purple, but it's, it's, it's slightly varied. It's a nice purple color. But because it's so thick, it's not, it's not readily apparent. The variation isn't obvious. It's sort of subtle. And th that's what's, what's neat about these, about these color shifts, is you vary the thickness and you, you can create these colors. I'm going to do the back side now of my, my mixture is congealing. I think you can see that. So now I have to be extra careful about, about pooling, about it getting pooled up and being too thick to see the variation. But I just continue making sure I get in every nook, every nook and cranny. Now I've got I've got I've got too much paint on it here, so all I do is I clean my I get the paint off my brush on the piece of newspaper I have, and I just I just work that paint into the brush and off the piece. Just like this. Just like that. And now you can also see the color variation now on the back side as well. So the color of our of our makigami comes through. And we end up with this with this subtle subtle variation. I'm just making sure I'm getting all my edges. The, the worst thing you can have happen is, is, is to miss a spot because you, you may try and go back and, and cover it up. See, here's a spot I've missed right here. And I can, I can try to go back and cover it up afterwards, but you'll, you'll find it's almost impossible to fix it after the fact. So you really, you really need to inspect your work carefully at this point. Okay, so now uh, that looks pretty good. And now I just need to do the spot where I was holding it. You can see my paint has, has really congealed here. And this, this happens occasionally. And now I'm going to work on the top here where I was holding it. 
Just get every nook and cranny. Just like that. Wipe off any excess. Okay. And now I just, the very last, oh, I missed a little teeny spot right inside here. Got it. So the last step is to just is just paint over any any spot where you may have have left a fingerprint, and also you know inspect inspect your work for any any spots you might have missed. That that looks pretty good. And so I'm gonna let this I'm gonna let this dry now. So now my purple pendant has dried, and you can see it's got this beautiful color, and the variation uh, in color is still visible. You can see that this piece right here is much darker than that piece, and it's just an exquisite, uh, uh, beautiful pendant.